their work begins with the dawn. They are the men who operate the aircraft used in agriculture. In cities and towns, on farms and grazing properties in every part of Australia, they prepare for the day's work. Pilots, engineers, mechanics and ground crew. Each a specialist. Each concerned with the operation of aircraft in agriculture. Today, there's hardly a corner of Australia, hardly a branch of primary industry that doesn't call for the services of aircraft. From the far northwest, where the Ord River irrigates the farmlands of pioneer cotton growers, to grazing pastures bordering the shores of the Southern Ocean. They operate on the wheat farms of the great inland plains. They fly in the shadow of the southern Alps, sowing eucalyptus seeds. Seeds that will grow into forests of valuable hardwoods. They spray weed killer to protect a sugar crop in North Queensland. Spread superphosphate on grazing land in southern Tasmania. sow rice seeds in the flooded paddocks of the Murrumbidgee irrigation area, sow grass on newly cleared land in central Queensland, spray insecticide in Western Australia to destroy household pests, spray weed killer on pastures in South Australia, spread superphosphate in Victoria. Whatever the region, whatever the crop, aircraft are at work helping the farmer. Seeding, fertilizing, spraying. Operating in country too rugged for ground machinery. Treating waterlogged paddocks where ground implements would bog down. Operating without the damage to crops sometimes caused by wheeled vehicles. In recent years, the use of aircraft in agriculture has grown tremendously, contributing to increased production and increased income from exports. The Federal Minister for Primary Industry, the Honourable C.F. Adaman, has this to say. Primary industry is a vital factor in Australia's economy, with a tremendous potential for increased production and increased exports. To attain this, we must make every possible use of scientific methods and technological aids. And one of these, of course, is agricultural aviation. My department has been cooperating with this industry by scientifically testing the spreading efficiency of aircraft. For we believe that agricultural aviation will play an ever-growing part in the development of primary industry. Already we have opened up 
millions of acres of once useless land. Aircraft today are being used to fertilize about 20 million acres of improved pastures. But this is only a beginning. Out of yet only about 12.5% of the country in the good rainfall areas have been pasture improved. So without doubt agricultural aviation is going to play a much greater part in the drive for a more and more export. The first property in Australia to use aircraft for pasture improvement was Mirani, a large grazing property near Walka in the New England district of New South Wales. Because of the nature of the country, early attempts to improve Mirani pastures using ground equipment failed. The late Mr. A.S. Niverson then decided to try applying superphosphate and seeds from an aircraft. And in 1950, from this spot, a tiger moth took off fitted with an improvised hopper containing superphosphate. It was the beginning of large-scale pasture improvement in Australia, a development that has revolutionized the pastoral industry. On properties like Mirani, the regular annual program of fertilizing by aircraft has raised carrying capacity and wool yields four and five hundred percent and more. The supply and handling of superphosphate and other fertilizers applied by air operators is usually organized as a contract service to landholders. The fertilizer is loaded from the railway siding or agent's depot into high-sided trucks that transport to the landholder's airstrip where it's dumped ready for aerial spreading. 